I'd like to call tonight's Summers of Planning Board meeting to order. Anna, please call the roll. Mark Richardson. Here. Jason Berry. Here. Ken Vincent. Here. Ron LaHoulier. Here. Jeremy Rhodes. Here. Chris Horton. Here. Doug Haberman. Here. At this time, I'd like to appoint Mr. Haberman as full voting member for the evening. First item is approval of minutes of July 17, 2024. Does anybody have a motion? So moved. Motion made by Mr. Berry, seconded by Mr. Richardson. Discussion? Mr. Richardson. Yes, Mr. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to, um, I noticed that in our discussion about the waivers at the last meeting, that three of the items uh, that I voted no for, it said 8-0 on, on for the vote, and that was item five, six, and nine. Each of those three I voted no. There were others, but they were caught and noted on the, on the uh, minutes. So I just want to correct those three. So noted. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Abstain? Next item is committee reports. You, <coughs> you had the land use board summary. Is there any uh, comments on the land use board summary? Moving along, city council report. Mr. Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have another report tonight. Thank you. Next is Stratford Regional Planning Commission update. Yes, Mr. Richardson. Mr. Yes, Mr. Chairman. At our, at our meeting last Friday, the first thing we did was we approved the uh, the 2024 public participation plan, and that's a pretty comprehensive plan about involving the public in the decision making process uh, through things like social media, surveys and polls, uh, public meetings, and the like those kinds of things. Um, it also lays out some goals and objectives, and it's on the uh, SRPC website for anybody to read and review. That's it. Thank you. Any comments? Oh, I'm sorry, one more thing. Um, yes. We all, <laughs> this is probably the, the one that involves us most. Um, <coughs> we did look at the, um, uh, the coming up 10 year plan and there is room for proposals for uh, any community that wants to submit a proposal for the 10-year transportation plan. Uh, our region has $5.8 million. There are currently five proposals that are holdovers from previous, from last year, but there's room for more to be uh, considered. Uh, the thing we talked about is that uh, hopefully people are submitting plans that include cost estimates and uh, engineering studies and that kind of thing. So uh, more than just conceptual uh, ideas. And if, if they are conceptual ideas, then SRPC is willing to work with people to get the engineering. There's some money that they have left over from a grant for engineering and other kinds of uh, things that go with that. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Eyes on 30 to 2030 committee, Mr. Barry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, so uh, we actually did not have a meeting in July. So uh, we did have our most recent meeting here on Monday and we had a very productive meeting. Um, first things first, um, we will be going over the 2010 master plan and do a quick review of the things that we may have missed. There might be some low hanging fruit there. We also took a look at our categories. So we've decided to adjust the categories that we have we now have eight categories that we're going to start breaking down into. Um, I can read those off to you if you like. Uh, right now they are diversity and heritage, sustainability, communication, community engagement, education, revitalization, accessibility and investments, and beautification. So we're gonna try and break down into those groups when we're ready. Um, Right now, we're, we're looking at three particular things in particular. Um, one is community mapping. So we are looking at possibly building up neighborhoods and trying to have ways of distributing information. Uh, wayfinding, you know, as far as signage, things of that nature, pointing out where hotspots are, or key restaurants, uh, trails, things of that nature. And also beautification. Um, you know, for example, like an adopt a spot or sponsor a tree, things like that. Um, as far as the overall strategy, uh, we agree that we're going to continue to work on the plan and develop it as best we can through roughly spring. At that point, we're going to bring in subject matter experts to review those plans for feasibility and risk assessment, to which then we'll 
bring the plan back to the board for review. All right, so that's our strategy for now. I have to report. Thank you. Community Power Coalition, Mr. Horton. Committee has not met. Housing Committee, Mr. Horton. No report. All right, thank you. Next, move on to item three, old business. Is there any old business before the board this evening, Director Mayors? None this evening, Mr. Chairman. All right, thank you. Next item, new business. Item A, Logic Investments LLC is seeking minor subdivision approval for one lot subdivision on a property located at 378 Main Street in the Business B District, Assessors Map 07, Lot 08, sub number 04, 2024. Director Mears, anything to add? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you all should have received my memo. Uh, the applicant is requesting to subdivide the existing 0.55 acre parcel into two lots. There is an existing single family residence within uh, one of the lots which will remain. The lot is located in the business di district which does not have minimum lot sizes or frontage requirements. Uh, new residential is permitted at street level in this portion of the business district. And this, pl this is ready to, for review. Application is ready. Yep. Accept the motion to accept the application. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Horton, second by Mr. Rhodes. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Before we start, I'd like to ask everybody to please turn off or mute your cell phones or other electronic devices. Also, anybody that cares to speak this evening, please come up to the uh, podium and speak into the microphone, or if you have to stray from the podium, we do have a portable mic you can use. <coughs> At this time, I'd like to invite Mr. McEnany to make his presentation. Sorry about that. Do you want me to repeat all that or we, or we get, we, we yeah, get, no, okay. So um, Logic Investments owns the property at 378 Main Street. Uh, it's approximately a half acre lot currently with a single family house that's under renovation. Uh, the proposal before you tonight is to split the lot basically in half. Um, the, the new lot with the house will have 12,600 square feet and the new vacant lot will have 11,500 square feet. It is uh, the lot serviced by municipal sewer and water. Uh, the, there are no wetlands on the property. Basically, the frontage is on Main Street, and the rear lot is abuts the uh, railroad tracks. Um, the urban compact line is in play here. It uh, really is splits the lot in half. So the existing house and that lot will be within the urban compact, will be within the state jurisdiction, and the new lot that we're creating, the vacant lot, will be within the jurisdiction of the town for, or the city for um, driveway permits. Um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. All right, thank you. May I have some for you? At this time, I'm gonna open the public hearing for any comments from the public. If you do have any comments, please come up and state your name and your address or your affiliation. In the public hearing, anybody care to comment? Director Mayors, is there any correspondence? None this evening. Seeing none, close public hearing. Turn to questions from the board. Mr. Richardson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I did notice, um, I drove by there and, and I looked a um, couple of things. The, as you're looking at it, the left-hand side of the home, is that going to comply with setbacks for the new lot? It seems like it's awfully close, and it, if I'm reading this right, it's like three feet from the new line. Uh, uh, it's in this zone, there are actually no setbacks, no minimum lot size, no frontage requirements. Okay. Um, the, where the mailbox is, that looks like it's going to be over the line Towards the in the in the new in the new lot is that, that going to be moved over? That, that is will that be relocated. Stay there? That will be relocated. Okay. Um, the other thing I had is there there is curbing that goes 
in front of the 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 new lot. And if you have a, we will he need a driveway permit for, for making a cut there? Yes, he will need a, a okay. driveway permit for the new lot. All right, that that's all I had. Thank you. Yeah, and during the driveway permit process, if we disturb any of the curbing, we'll you know put it back to the original condition. Yeah, I did notice that, so I just wanted to make sure that we were including the driveway. <laughs> that's okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions from the board? Mr. Barry, you're all set? Yeah. Okay. Entertain a motion for regional impact. Make a motion that the project does not have regional impact. Motion made by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Richardson. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Uh, Director Mayor, is a uh, kid review to staff recommendations? Yes, uh, first item is plan revisions per the city assessor lots are to be known as map seven lot eight and map seven lot eight dash one lot eight will be the lot with the existing structure uh, new property markers along the front property line to be set shall be granite bounds. Please show the water utilities on uh, the plan conditions that must be met prior to final approval. The final plans shall bear the stamp and signature of a licensed land surveyor and should be submitted to the Department of Development Services along with a PDF copy of the final recorded plans for tax map updates. Monumentation, granite bounds shall be installed at all intersections of the lot lines and street right of ways as well as the property corners which do not abut the public right of way. A surveyor is to submit a signed letter to the planning department <coughs> stating that the new lot corner monuments have been set prior to the recording of the subdivision. Conditions to be completed prior to the start of site work all new service connections from the utility overhead line shall be installed underground. The applicant shall apply for a new water and sewer connection permit. The applicant will be required to pay standard water and sewer connection fees assessed on the new properties connecting to the water and sewer system. The development will require a new address. Please submit a request for a new address to the city engineer. If a hearing before the E911 committee is required, this uh, hearing must occur prior to the issuance of building permits. Per section C, Per section 1923E1, the building shall display the designated address number in such a manner as to be plainly visible from the street which abuts the main entrance to the property. Such number shall be a minimum of 3.5 inches in height and must be reflective. The applicant shall obtain all applicable permits through the Department of Public Works or New Hampshire DOT as applicable where the property is located in close proximity to the transition between the state of New Hampshire and locally owned Main Street. This shall include but not limited to driveway permits and trench permits. Erosion controls are required to be installed prior to the start of site work. Conditions applicable during and after construction. All new subdivision lots shall be required to have a foundation survey submitted prior to the issuance of certificate of occupancy. If during construction the existing curbing or roadways are damaged, the lot owner will be required to repair and replace in kind to the satisfaction of the Director of Public Works and Utilities. The new proposed lot once developed shall have a minimum of two trees not less than two uh, inches in caliber in the front yard and these trees may be retained from the existing on-site trees or new plantings prior to the issuance of certificate of occupancy. Thank you. Entertain the subdivision motion, Mr. Horton. I move that the request of Logic Investments LLC for a minor subdivision approval to create one new lot at property located at 378 Main Street be approved with the conditions outlined in the director's memo. Motion made by Mr. Horton, second by Mr. Rhodes. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Application is approved. <coughs> Item B, Matt Lawton is seeking a waiver from section 12.7.B.8 of the site plan review regulations requirement for the screening of rooftop mechanical equipment on a property located at 192 Route 108 in the Commercial Industrial CI District, assesses map 62, lot 05, site number 11, 2022. Director Mayor, is anything to add? Yes, uh, so this was approved uh, by the Planning Board back in October 2022. 
uh, the request for site plan approval and conditional use permit for automobile sales and infrastructure. The applicant began construction of the project in April uh, 2023. It was brought to our attention that one of the units from the southbound lane of Route 108 is visible from the street and does not meet the site plan regulations for screening of rooftop mechanical. Uh, the construction company was faced with supply chain availability issues of the rooftop mechanical equipment and needed to make changes of the manufacturer. Uh, these units are slightly larger uh, and taller than the original ones proposed. So that's why they are coming back before the planning board to seek a waiver from rooftop uh, mechanical being visible from the street. We did provide some uh, photos uh, from Route 108 uh, looking uh, northbound at the, at the site. And that's it. Thank you. Is the application ready for acceptance? Yes, the application is ready for acceptance. Entertain a motion for the application acceptance. Mr. Horton. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Horton. Second by Mr. Berry. Discussion. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Application is accepted. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Matt Lawton, a representative, to uh, make a presentation. Good evening. Good evening, Matt Lawton with Connolly Brothers. We were the architect and construction manager for the project. I'm um, representing DSR Motor Group and Tri-City Chrysler Dodge Jeep and Ram as well uh, as their uh, project manager for the project. Uh, as Michelle mentioned, um, we were notified very late in the process, unfortunately, that the unit in question uh, was more visible. Um, as I've mentioned and as, as was outlined, we did have a uh, supply chain issue that required us to look at alternate units. We ch checked them for general size as far as plan and uh, location and capacities in our typical reviews, but we typically don't pay quite as much attention to the height because it's typically not as much of an issue. Um, but in this case, it appears that it is an issue. So we are unfortunately uh, held up. We're currently operating under a temporary certificate of occupancy. We've satisfied, I believe, every other requirement um, throughout the process that was laid out in the conditions for approvals. Uh, and I believe our temporary CFO actually may be coming up uh, for uh, the deadline as of uh, beginning the next week, I believe. Um, so if a recommendation is made for some work, we would need an extension on that certificate of occupancy as well. Um, at this point in time, it would be very difficult to provide a physical screen. Um, if you do provide screening on a rooftop and in particular something that close to the edge of the building, uh, you're going to be imparting additional snow loads onto the roof uh, as well as the roof below because of the high low conditions in this case. Uh, that would require some significant structural modifications to the roof joists in occupied space at this time. So it would be very difficult to accomplish um, from a, uh, that sort of standpoint. Alternatively, and I believe I heard uh, represent our member Jason briefly talking with uh, member Richardson about perhaps an option of, to paint the units um, that are in particular the one uh, that is viewed most from the south side. Uh, we'd look to probably either do something either black to match the building, which you would kind of see blending into the rest of the building itself, or perhaps a dark green to match the trees to the back of the site. Uh, this paint would be matte in finish. It would not be gloss, so that it would sort of try to blend into the surroundings at that point. Um, our recommendation would be for the one unit that's in particular uh, of appearance, I guess is the way that I would say it. So I leave it up to, I, I hold my hat in my hand. It's, you know, unfortunately we're way down in the process and, and we wish that we had perhaps caught this earlier. Um, you know, we, these units did go up in December of 2023. We had plenty of time to perhaps at that point reevaluate our uh, situation. And unfortunately we didn't stand out in the street, I guess enough looking from that side. If you stand at the sign sort of right at the uh, entrance to the property, you don't see the unit surprisingly. We looked at, we kept looking at pictures for months beyond it and we couldn't see the unit until we drove down the street uh, after it was brought to our attention and we said, oh, those couple of trees that we were 
uh, asked to remove in the electrical easement and to uh, increase visibility for the sign now made that unit pop pop out so increased I, visibility yes <laughs> increased not only the building's visibility but that unit's location was previously perhaps screened by trees as you were driving up so I leave it to the board for hopefully your recommendation either to accept our request <coughs> for waiver or uh, perhaps to apply a simple condition to paint the unit question thank okay. you Open a public hearing. Is there anybody in the audience care to comment on the application? Any correspondence? None this evening. Concerning this application? None. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Questions from the board. Mr. Vincent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, um, you know, I'm an alternate here, and uh, I come once every or twice a year here. I'm really going to sit back and follow the boards um, that you see, the, the board members here, because they really are here every single month. Uh, I'm going to follow your lead. But there's one thing that comes up to mind is this, is if we, if, if the board grants this, does this open up a box for everybody that doesn't comply? Do they come out and do they now get a waiver too because somebody else got a waiver that always that always comes to my mind another thing is be a question for um the uh, the applicant or the the builder or the architect and thank you for taking my question but if this doesn't get granted which what do you do about this um if i may um speak to the first part of your question there is or to the first part of your statement there are a multiple multitude of projects uh, going up and down that route uh, stretch all the way from the city line to uh, all the way up to the hilltop chevrolet site i did a quick survey and every building that has a flat roof has rooftops that are vis visible um, we did bring that to the attention of uh, the planning department and they mentioned to us that a lot of those projects have been grand grandfathered in or that they have received waivers uh, in previously in the past as well as far as if we don't get a waiver uh, or a, a, uh, a additional condition to paint the units they, I, I don't really there's there's not really much we can do that unit is uh, feeding the service drive through um, which has a mechanical requirement for ventilation and for for tempering uh, as there are service writers within the service drive um, and we tried to locate that roof or that unit on the upper roof and away from the edge that it wouldn't be visible if we put it on the lower roof it would be even more visible um, so there's not really a method to relocate that unit uh, and provide uh, additional duct work to to get it to work from from that location without additional structural modifications as well because that rooftop uh, would require addition requires a mechanical curb uh, structural steel at the joists to support the roof. The, the roof was designed for that unit in that location. Um, so it would be becoming quite uh, the process. It could be done. It would be very, very difficult, uh, very time consuming uh, to, to complete. Thank you. Okay, I guess my question is uh, the reason is because of the uh, different design from the original intent of what you were going to buy that's correct we i mean we did uh, at the time i did bring the original renderings uh and and views that we had done which again i think we took had the view taken basically right at the curb uh not perhaps far enough into the road uh that did show that the the unit had been concealed um in the past i can um, bring those up if, if you'd like to see them um but the majority of the units if um on the building themselves they grew in height as a result um, and because of the material change. Okay, so you, you couldn't get the same type of... Uh... No, they, it was not. It was going to be two years before we could get the unit from the original manufacturer. We had to substitute manufacturers. There's no way you can extend the wall up. So if we did extend the roof, as I said, um, you're now creating a shelf for snow to drift up against, which would require additional structural modifications um, for it. In order to conceal that unit, you'd probably have to raise the roof probably in the range of five feet 
which would be considerable and impart an additional snow load on the upper roof where it's going to drift up against that as well as the lower roof below. Other questions from the board? Mr. Rhodes. Mr. Richardson. Thank you. Um, I've driven by there several times since you opened, never noticed it. We were going to pick up my wife's car today. <laughs> and all of a sudden, just about where this, just about where this photograph was taken, there it was. And, and you know, she was driving my car and I'm just sitting there and all of a sudden I went, wow. And then two seconds later, you and don't see it. You get 50 feet more and you don't see it at all. Exactly. When you, like as you say, when you come turn it in, it's gone. You don't see it. And, it, and it's almost a shame that there aren't a couple of more of these trees that just come down a little bit further because you wouldn't notice it either. But it was, when I noticed it, it was just very bright. And maybe it's because the sun finally came out or something like that, I'm not sure, but all of a sudden it was very, very noticeable. Um, I think, uh, as Mr. Barry was talking about, maybe there are those trees behind there and maybe uh, you know a green similar paint or something like that might just do the job and hide it pretty well. But uh, it, it was a surprise to me because I've driven by there on my own several times and not even noticed it until today. I will say probably most people, again, they're doing, I, mm -hmm. I, I don't want to say what the posted speed limit is on there. I forget if it's 30 or 35. Most people are probably doing in excess of that. Um, and if you're not really looking for, if you're not looking for this situation, you're not going to see it because it's within a blink of an eye, basically. And like you said, within 25, 50 feet, mm -hmm. you don't see it any longer. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Rose and Mr. Horton. So you're caught in between kind of a rock and a hard place here. If you have to ascend that wall, you're doing significant re-engineering to the building. At the same time, what I don't want the board to get into a practice of is just freely granting after the fact waivers, um, which puts us in an interesting position. To kind of piggyback off of an item that Mr. Vincent raised, um, there is a concern about opening that box up. However, we do have an extenuating circumstance in here. You were trying to build this in an era with unprecedented supply chain disruptions that cause you to have to modify plans. So I like the idea that Mr. Berry and Mr. Richardson have discussed around uh, painting the unit, um, particularly with the trees behind it. Green makes sense. And uh, there's actually a specific shade, uh, which I'm not kidding, is called Go Away Green. Uh, Sounds like you know it. Um, Disney developed it for construction walls because it specifically blends into backgrounds and makes things less noticeable. Um, it's a matte green that really does work. Um, so it is an eyesore. I think painting it makes it a lot less of an eyesore. I'd be in favor of going that route. I appreciate that. Thank you. And we would make sure that we source the proper green for it. We're certainly not going to go lime green or, or some, some green that would stick out. Thank you. Mr. Horton. I'll just uh, piggyback on uh, all good comments made here tonight. Uh, I would agree. Uh, I have not noticed it. I've driven by several times and not noticed the uh, rooftop structures. So it was only when it was pointed out that I, that I did notice it. So I would be in favor of a non-invasive type approach here. You know, if painting is a solution, I'd be OK with that. Uh, other than that, I would be OK with um, leaving it as is as well so i'm at the i'm at the uh, discretion of the board here so mr barry yeah everyone knows how i feel um so <laughs> <laughs> i know it's like the writing was on the wall you get, i you know i we, um, we had talked about it and i overheard so I, yeah I well good. um you know the reality is that you know you guys got stuck in a bad situation right i mean the, we did it right guys i mean we we looked at the plans we we went based on on what you guys were going to do and you can't predict the market. You don't know what's going to happen, right? Um, it's an inconvenience. Yes, I, I agree with you that the engineering would be astronomical to do that. Those units are very, very heavy, and not to mention all of the um, piping and routings and ducting, all of it. So, yeah, and I, I don't know what the exact color is. I say, you know, find out what's going on directly behind it and try and mimic it. Look from the south, look from the north, find the happy medium. Maybe it is uh, go away green, whatever that color green. I know the color green you're talking about. Might, 
might be a, might be a little light for this application, but I like where you're going. So um, I would say go for it. I'll definitely vote for the paint. Thank you. Any other comments from the board, Mr. Haberman? Yeah, I agree with the rest of the board on, uh, <clears throat> on a situation like that you have. Um, and agree with Mr. <clears throat> the rest of the board when I've driven by there. I've never seen it either. So I agree with the board. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. This does not require a uh, regional impact? No. <coughs> okay, looking for a motion for the waiver request. Mr. Richardson. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I move that the uh, site plan waiver application of Matthew Lawton be uh, accepted with the uh, requirement of painting the uh, utility the, an appropriate color. Hopefully it'll go away. <laughs> Motion made by Mr. Richardson. Seconded by Mr. Haberman. Any discussion? Those in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion passes. Waiver is granted. Thank you. Uh, we greatly appreciate it. We'll make sure that we get on that right away. Um, as far as extending the temporary certificate of occupancy, how should we have our office continue to work with you on that? We'll work on uh, emailing back and forth on, on a date that you think you can get it painted by. Very good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, may I just add from, from a, a board perspective, um, thank you for your expediency in meeting with us on this. Uh, we very quickly responded to the, uh, the concern from your board and had very limited time to respond. Um, but I, I do greatly appreciate uh, your willingness to listen to us and to put on us on a very early agenda. Um, we've been doing a lot of work with other uh, locations uh, in the area recently, and the process has been excruci excruciating. So Summer's Worth has been very good to be working with. Um, I know we had some challenges early on back in 2022 when we were dealing with the original design um, and some compromises from the corporate standard that we needed to make that we feel still makes for a beautiful building. Um, but it was very good to be working with this board, and we look forward to working with you guys in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Item C, Land Use and Natural Resources Master Plan Chapter <coughs> Workshop with Stratford Regional Planning Commission. Director Mears. Yes, thank you. We have uh, Stratford Regional Planning Commission. We have Jackson Rand here and Lisa Murphy. Uh, they have been helping us with the Land Use and Natural Resources Master Plan Chapter. And we're going to do a few exercises that they've listed out. So I'm going to let them take it over. Thank you. So the green light's on. Can you hear me? OK. So Jackson is pass passing out some uh, Thank you. sticky sticky notes. And um, what we're going to do is I know you've all received a copy of the, um, the, the goals um, and the themes. Uh, for both the natural resource and the land use set chapters. Um, I think to save time, because we've got an hour here uh, and not several hours, we're not going to go over each one of them. Uh, but instead, um, I'll mention the themes and, and the goals. And if you have some, uh, some changes that you think we should have, um, go ahead and write them on your sticky notes. And please say whether it's for goal number one, two, or three. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll compile that and, and put it into the draft. Um, I think that's a, the most efficient way we can do this. Um, so the themes uh, and so the goals actually have been taken from different uh, workshops we've done. And we've come up with four for the land use. We've come up with four themes. Um, the intent is to keep this similar to the housing chapter. Um, it will have the same look. Uh, so the first theme for the land use is uh, sustainable and smart growth. 
Um, second, second theme is equitable and inclusive development. The third theme is access and connectivity. And the fourth theme is infrastructure resilience. Uh, so one of the things with the, we've got three goals under theme one. Um, some of these goals may end up being actions uh, rather than goals. Um, in looking at these, you know, I feel like some of them are really actions. So it might not come out as, as, as it is on this paper, but this is a, a very good start for us. Um, so goal number one is balanced sustainable development and smart growth that highlights and preserves history while accommodating future population, economic, and climate changes. Uh, number two is to pr promote green infrastructure and sustainable development practices in new construction and redevelopment. And goal number three is encourage the redevelopment of underutilized properties, parcels, and encourage infill in areas already developed. So if you have any suggested changes on any of those, you know, please take some time and write, write them down. If you have additional goals, you know, we'll take that too. Um, if you think it might be a, a good strategy, a good action, um, you know, write that down as well. Um, but I would appreciate if you put what, what number it is associated with so we don't have to guess. Yes. Yeah, just like Lisa said, if you can write number one, number two, or number three on the post-it note, and if you have a post-it note filled out, just raise your hand, I'll come around and grab it and stick them up on the poster board for you. Here's my lovely Vanna White. <laughs> All right. Stratford Regional Planning Commission did uh, print out some additional material. It's Summersworth Master Plan Update, Land Use and Natural Resources, uh, Draft Themes and Goals yes. to refer back to. Is, is, does everybody have a copy of that? You, you passed it all out? Okay. All right, theme number two, equitable and, and inclusive development. Goal number one is equitable and inclusive development that engages residents and ensures that projects meet community needs and reflect local values. Goal number two is expand upon public engagement processes and practices, foster community leadership. And goal number three is strengthen partnerships for development with businesses, nonprofits, and community groups and developers. And if you have any questions, if there's something you, you know, aren't quite understanding, feel free to let us know. Theme number three, access and connectivity. Uh, goal number one, improving access to amenities and connectivity throughout the community. Goal number two is enhanced connectivity through maintaining existing and expanding pedestrian and biking infrastructure along key corridors and throughout neighborhoods <coughs> in the community, uh, existing open space and recreational sites. So that's a long one for a goal. Goals are usually a little bit shorter. Um, that might be more, like I mentioned, that might be more of, a, of an action, but we can work with it. Goal number three, uh, implement the principles of complete streets for future and existing development. Any questions on any of those? Yes. Going back to uh, theme number one, goal two. Uh, my question is um, for the, is the board able to influence contractors to move towards a green, sustainable building practice? Is that within our purview or influence? Um. Good question. Michelle, do you have any response to that? Or is it something that so we could do it in our site plan regulations, for example, um, if we were in an aquifer protection zone, uh, we could ask uh, that the people plowing uh, the parcel uh, could be Green Pro certified so they're not uh, adding additional salt to that area. So I think there's ways that we can do it uh, per the regulations. And if you have suggested changes to that one, you know, write them down. Any other questions? Okay. Um, theme number four, infrastructure resilience. Goal number one, foster the need for resilient infrastructure through incentives and regulation. 
And goal number two, promote and expand mixed use development and zoning to support economically and social, socially diverse areas more resilient to economic shocks or other challenges. You have a question? Yes. Infrastructure resilience, is that the, to stop building things? So like if you're in a hurricane zone, uh, you would try to encourage people to build their houses more for standards or like, you know, we've had in the last probably 10, 20 years, a lot of supposedly 100 year floods. Mm -hmm. Same thing with where they build their houses and how they build them. I mean, is that, that what this is that, getting that at? That could be, I, you know, what, what comes to mind for me is infrastructure such as culverts and things uh, make them more resilient to heavy storm events. Um, you know, roads, the road infrastructure, things so like that. So it's not that. just homes, it's uh, the whole, right, whole right. deal. Okay. Thanks. Sure. All right. Um, any changes? We're doing really good. <laughs> um, well, these were carefully put together between city staff and, and our staff. Um, like I said, it's things that we've accumulated from the surveys and, and uh, workshops. So natural resources, theme number one, uh, green spaces, natural amenities, and sustainable development. Goal number one, conserve and expand spaces and natural amenities throughout the community to improve access to recreation and activities while emphasizing environmental stewardship and conservation. It's a long one. Goal number two, urban green space development through the creation of pocket parks and the planting of more urban trees. Goal number three, improve natural assets in the urbanized areas of the community and ensure that new development emphasizes sustainable practices. <coughs> Goal number four, encourage alternatives to conventional subdivisions by using innovative land use methods. Goal number five, review the existing ordinances surrounding conservation subdivisions. Out of curiosity, how, how are the conservation subdivisions, have you had, um, has that been one that's been used again and again? Uh, yes, it's required to have a conservation okay. and if you're not gonna if you're gonna do a traditional subdivision uh, You have to submit a special use permit. Mm -hmm. I think it's over five lots And did you previously have cluster subdivisions in here and changed it to conservation or was this just something thought of? I think it's both okay. Yeah, I know conservation subdivisions you're supposed to do the conservation land first and then the lots around it right, so you don't end up with the at, garbage. At one time we had clubs cluster subdivision but we had to pull it back because people were using uh, they weren't using uplands as a conservation uh, uh, in the calculation part yeah. so it was pulled back and then it was reissued with those changes yeah, I was just curious because I have one one town I'm working with is gung-ho on cluster subdivisions and it's like, no, conservation subdivisions are a little bit better way to go. So just curious. Thanks. Yeah, plus I think the terminology was kind of uh, fine-tuned mm -hmm. to reflect that. Good. Glad to see it. All right. Uh, the next one is land conservation trails and connectivity. Goal number one, improve community connectivity through the creation of a network of trails and natural areas. Goal number two is develop criteria to assist in decisions for acquisition of land for conservation. Any questions on those? Okay. I guess my one question. Yes. Uh, when, uh, in one case, we're, we're trying to conserve land, but also people are saying we got to build more houses to to uh, or build more residences for uh, you know to make housing affordable for right. people so it's kind of how's that balanced <laughs> well because I mean, you need the land to build and right you know and and infill development is one way um, you know um, lot sizes with the conservation subdivision is another way 
Um, but yeah, it is always a, you know, a lot of times when we're working in the planning field, there's conflicting interests um, and you do your best to work with them. It's kind of built up instead of out. <laughs> yeah, that's another way, yep. Um, Multi-units are another way. Um, yeah, there, you know, we thought we were smart years ago by requiring, you know, bigger lot sizes and, you know, then, then that ended up biting us and creating sprawl and now we're like, oh boy, now what do we do? So, um, I think we're getting smarter. Um, okay. Theme number three, environmental stewardship and protection. Goal number one, seek best management practices for reducing invasive species and develop resources for property owners. Goal number two, develop strategies to protect air quality. Goal number three, uh, protect the, the quality and quantity of water resources. Goal number four is consider ways for biodiversity and habitat protection. Goal number five, create awareness of the impact of climate change and weather impact on the natural environment. Goal number six, seek to conserve lands that will create unfragmented parcels and wildlife corridors. Any questions on those? All right, theme number four, education, outreach, and leadership development. Goal number one, increase awareness of the city's natural resources through outreach and education. And goal number two, cultivate leadership for the future to support environmental stewardship and conservation efforts. Any questions on those? I think these were all really worked well, um, worked through um, and it's it's a good it's a good set of uh, goals. Yes. Mr. Vincent. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I can just comment, you know, um, uh, you can see uh, this goes back along the lines of lot size. Uh, you can see that uh, the city of Dover, and I know we're not Dover, um, we're never going to be Dover, but cities that are close to each other sometimes feed off each other, uh, and it works well. You can see along the Route 108 uh, corridor uh, in the Willam Pond area, it's almost like they've reduced their lot size to a quarter acre to accommodate some really, really close housing in there. Um, and I guess, I mean, I guess that's their solution uh, right now to a never-ending growth of population to accommodate um, housing. Um, boy, really tight. It's really tight. And it really changes the whole dynamics of what a neighborhood looks like. It's, re it's just so tight. Uh, that's just a comment. You know, and one of the things is by providing housing options. You know, some people might like that. Uh, that might be more affordable. Um, others might want, you know, a larger parcel and not be bothered by their neighbors. You know, I, I personally agree with you. I don't want neighbors that close to me. But, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that don't mind it. So um, it's all about housing options. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Barry, then Mr. Richardson. I'll yeah. Check uh, this side. Couple of, a couple of random comments. And actually, I'm going to piggyback that statement. You know, it's, it's all about what do you want to be when you grow up, yeah. right? <laughs> um, you know, I live, I live on the Rollinsford side of Indigo Hill. And for me, I have a half acre lot. I love it. I don't want people right you know, 20 feet away from me. You know, it's way too close. Um, so I'm okay with development. I'm okay with um, packing it in tight. But we have to be very smart about where we do it and how we do it. Right, I'm. I'm even coming around to the ADU conversation. I, I was I was anti ADU right from the from the get go. So, anyway, um, back to this. So, um, so I'm on the uh, the Eyes for 2030 committee. Just so you're aware. So it's a lot of these these things that you're looking at are actually in alignment with the things that we're talking about. Um, one of those things is wayfinding. Right. So we want to try and pick out places in the city and put up signs to help guide folks towards things. So I love this idea of you know having your connectivity of, of uh, network trails and natural mm -hmm. areas. Um, I think that's wonderful. Uh, you know certainly we'd like to participate and try and help you link those together. Uh, the more the merrier, right? Um, we're also a big fan, and, and we, we spent quite a bit of time yesterday talking about regrowth, right? Um, allowing certain areas of the town to naturally reclaim themselves. Um, you know, things like adopt a spot, spots or a tree, 
um, literally on my notes, it says, allow areas to naturally reclaim. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm thinking like, you know, the, the golf course, that's now a conservation area. Well, imagine if we didn't touch, if we, we took a part of the pines, for example, we said, you know what, this 200 foot by 200 foot area, we don't touch it. What's, what's it gonna look like in five years? You're probably gonna have trees growing there. Mm -hmm. Let's give it back, right? So I like a lot of things that you have going on here. Um, personally, I don't wanna change anything. I think mm -hmm. you guys have done a phenomenal job. Um, and I look forward to seeing this when it comes out formally. Good. It, it's been worked and worked and worked. So uh. I can tell. <laughs> Great job, guys. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Richardson, are you next? Yeah. When, whenever I see invasive species, mm -hmm. I spent 18 years trying to eradicate Phragmites and knotweed at the transfer station in Hampton near the marsh. An impossible task. They just grow right back. Exactly what you're talking about. Um, I know up at the Pines, we use the goats uh, to get rid of the, the poison ivy was the primary thing, but there were other species up there that the goats gobbled down. Within two years, there are, everything's right back again. Right. I, I see an emphasis on some invasive species as an ongoing money-wasting project. I honestly do. Because, I mean, they're, 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 they're so invasive, they be, I mean, you know, you're in conservation and you probably, you might have other opinions here, but um, it's a lot of money that is literally spent just to do it all over again. Mm. And I don't, I don't understand that. I mean, they're, they're invasive for a reason. They've come and they've taken over. I, I understand what you're saying. You know, I have conflicting uh, reasons of, of similar to that. You know, yes, it's a lot of money. When I when I go and see a highway that all these trees are dying, it's like, all right, uh, we've got climate change happening. We've got you know drier weather and, and hotter weather. And, um, you know, are is this the new way to go you know is this the new evolution but i don't think so um you know there's there's but i agree it it is quite costly and um it's it seems like a never-ending battle to be honest with you um, but i i think it, it's a tough one i read an article where you know a new species of bird was found in this um uh, invasive species and uh, you know it's like well should we be taking that out uh, whether that was true or not I don't know but and I and I have one I want to let other people speak first before you answered this as I was reading this and following along with you I I, I have to admit I lost track what we're supposed to do with these so <laughs> if, after everybody else gets a chance to speak then if you could just go over that quickly again <laughs> So what those were for is if you had some changes uh, to any of these or some suggestions on how to improve them or an additional okay. oh, okay. goal, um, then that's what we'd be looking for. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like everybody's pretty, uh, yep. pretty set with what we've got. Okay. Mr. Horton and then Mr. Rhodes. Yeah, that was just going to be my comment as well. I think you guys done a fantastic job uh, coming up with the goals and themes, and uh, I wouldn't add up subtract or anything at this, at this time, so thank you. Like I said, we can't take all the credit. City staff uh, did a great job in reviewing them, too. So, Mr. Rhodes and Mr. Haven. Uh, so I'd echo comments about the quality of these. I think they're extremely high. Um, everybody involved has done a great job with them. The only thing that I'd suggest as a potential change is to find some terms at the front for folks who might not be as familiar. Um, I'd like to see this become a citizen resource as well to try to get people more involved, and they may not be as familiar with a lot of the planning terms that we run into. Um, to kind lose of, sight of that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> it's easy, too. I work in technology, and I understand. Um, we're, we're some of the worst offenders. Um, to kind of comment on what Mr. Richardson raised with invasives, yeah, it can feel like a losing battle sometime, per sometimes, particularly if you're dealing with knotweed. That stuff, yeah. I, I don't think you're killing it without a backhoe and some persistence. Um, but even getting away from the, the tree-hugging aspects of that concern is the amount of damage that these things yeah. cause. Uh, bittersweet kills forests. Yeah. Um, knotweed destroys riverbanks. Uh, multiflora rose chokes out understories. 
um, Buckthorn comes in and takes over native forests. And the issue that we have here is in the absence of a native predator for these plants, there isn't control without the humans who put them here in the first place getting involved. And that's what creates the problem. If we don't keep these things pushed back, our ecosystem as it exists, as it exists today ceases to be. And it's a problem that humans made. Humans have to keep fighting back against it. Um, and many of the times has been we've brought the invasive in. In the vast majority of cases, and, yes. Yeah. I mean, not weed and kudzu are probably the most egregious examples of that. These things were encouraged plantings mm -hmm. for a long time until suddenly we found out that, oops, unintended consequences happened with these things. Um, commenting on uh, a piece that Mr. Barry raised, um, yeah, people do have different interests in how compact they want their living situations to be. I own a house in the downtown core. My bulkhead literally opens up onto my neighbor's land, and we're happy with it. Um, the idea here, I think, is to give people choices of what they want and not have cookie-cutter, half-acre, acre developments. People, Some people want that. I'd go crazy maintaining that much land. Um, so smart zoning allows you to create a city where people have different options. Of what they of how they choose to live and the circumstances they they want to experience in there and i think we've got a great opportunity to, to do that um also on the topic of conservation subdivisions and what those can turn into um i just did an easement monitoring exercise with another member of the conservation commission on saturday looking at a small plot of land that was put into conservation sandwiched between two very typical suburban cul-de-sac subdivisions you get 20 feet into the trees and it feels like primeval forest land does reclaim and we have this beautiful little sequestered ecosystem with evidence of fox and deer streams that are incredibly heavily populated with amphibians it creates corridors for wildlife yeah. and pockets of green space and conservation subdivisions create that um, and balance the need of increased housing against maintaining something of the natural world that we're bulldozing under to create that housing um, I would not want to lose sight of that I wouldn't want to go to a constant flow of tiny little lots of multifamily but we can encourage large multifamily developments that get housing units into an area that desperately needs them we have an opportunity to do something pretty important here with smart zoning to correct some of the tangle of zones that we have in this city and I'm grateful for the work that you and the city staff have done to try to look at this and get us someplace better. Okay, thank you. Mr. Haberman. Well, I don't think I could top any of that, but <laughs> <laughs> what I can say, I, I, I remember uh, quite a few months ago, we, we did this in help you develop uh, all these sustainable uh, items and the themes and the goals. And that was kind of interesting too, but yeah, based on, what everybody said here it, it's it's kind of hard but like you said and what the board says uh, to reach somebody's personal use of how they want to live is yeah yep. thank you you yeah. any other questions to the board director Mears take it away uh, I think we got to put our sticky notes up right Is that next um, do, do you have some that there's a couple okay i see jeremy has a couple uh what am i already going to answer okay so I mean, already answered. and my main one is around to find some terms so if that's something you can do if you do have any just raise your hand i'll come around and grab them um if not on the back side of that page there's also contact information so if you end up reviewing this later feel free to email us any additional information you have but if you have any post-its raise your hand i'll come grab them <laughs> and then we're going to break into two groups. Okay. Yeah, so for the next exercise, um, we're going to need you to get up and break into two groups. We've got a map. Oh, okay. Hold the horses. We've got a mapping exercise, and Jackson is our GIS mapping expert. Um, yeah, hi everyone. I'll, only three of you here I know, so I'll introduce myself real quickly. My name is Jackson Rand. I am the senior GIS planner at SRPC. 
Um, so if you've reviewed any of the maps in any of the recent projects we've done for Summersworth, I'm the one that made those maps. Um, and real quick, shameless plug, if you have any map needs in um, the city, feel free to reach out to me or reach out to Michelle and she can forward those along. Um, but if you could all grab this map that's in your packet for me. We did a workshop quite a while ago where we had four tables around a large room and we had a big poster sized map of the city of Summersworth on each table. And we said we gave everyone a bunch of sticky notes, markers, pencils, pens, highlighters, all of that. And we said, mark up this map in a way that you want Summersworth to look like in the future. We took all four of those maps and combined them into a single map, which is what you're looking at right here. Um, so if you could just take a minute or two to look at that, we're gonna pull these tables together and we have really big table size maps and we're gonna gather around the tables and we just wanna hear your input on whether or not you ultimately agree with what is on this final map or if you wanna see any changes. We have markers, pens, highlighters, sticky notes so we can mark up these maps if you wish. Uh, but we'll move the tables, just take a minute or two and take a look at that map, and then we'll pull the big ones out for you guys to look at. So while the um, planning board works with Stratford Regional Planning Commission, we're going to take a break on Channel 22, and uh, Lisa and Jackson are going to report out from each group. Back in session. Now it is. Um, how do I turn this on? Because I'm going to have to walk around. Denise. Just switch it. Underneath. Is that working? It's red underneath. Is that working? Testing, testing. Testing, testing. Hello. There you go. There we go. <laughs> All right. Um, there were a couple things that we differed on between the two groups. Um, so I put the maps up in front of all of you. I'm going to talk about some of the things that you all came to a similar consensus on. And then I'm going to point out the differences. Um, and we can have a discussion on what we think this should look like. Or if we can't come to an answer tonight, um, possibly homework assignment for you guys. Um, so I will point out that there is a con conservation area that we had mapped right here on the map. And both groups noted that the area nearby should also be conserved. Um, so it seems like there was general consensus there between um, all planning board members. Um, both groups talked about this trail and how wonderful this trail would be, um, but also discussed the logistics of that and how difficult it would be. Um, both groups seemed fine with all of the purple mixed use areas, and I didn't hear any suggestions for removing or expanding those districts. Um, the biggest changes that we saw between the two groups is if you look at the yellow kind of lime green area down at the bottom, it's the mid to high density zone. One group suggested pulling that zone down to commercial drive. The other group suggested pulling that zone up to Blackwater Road. Um, so that's one discrepancy between the two that we're gonna have to try to find a solution to. Um, I'll stop there and see if anyone has any thoughts before I go on to the next one. Maybe one of the solutions is it stays as is. You know. That's absolutely an option as well. I just talked to kind of what our group was discussed uh, on the mid density. Is I think we thought a lot of the structures in that area, a lot of the um, buildings and structures in that area were already kind of consistent with medium density. Mm -hmm. So I think that was kind of the rationale behind it and I I will point out that this was you know it was a very high level activity that we did um, 
and when we asked people to draw on the map and label what do you want that to be, people labeled it as mid to high density housing, but didn't tell us what their definition of that means. And so I do agree. Um, I heard from a bunch of people that having definitions for what these zones are on the map would be very beneficial. Does anyone have any comments on that yellow lime green zone about reducing, expanding, keeping it the same? Do you want to think about it? I think the point that I'd add on there is that there's already a trend in that towards tighter density housing. Um, we have a development which looks to be more like compact townhome type structures going in. Um, off of High Street in that space, I believe it's up there. Uh, not not that one, the, the yellow section. Um, <coughs> yeah, I think it's uh, down and to the left from our view. Yeah, in there. That's uh, going in up there. I can't. I don't remember the address off the top of my head, but it's a, a left after the 1886 barbershop as you're headed towards downtown. Uh, that's developing in there. So it seems like that space is kind of gravitating towards a higher density housing naturally. Um, Jumping off of, of that section a little bit too, we did have that section of the downtown that abuts the Salmon Falls River that's turning into more urban core than mixed use um, with the two apartment buildings. Uh, one already approved, another proposed in there too. Yeah, up there. But the other group said mixed. I don't know if you can speak into the mic. Thanks. But the other group said mixed use development is good in that you could still accomplish, you know, the uh, higher density um, with the mixed use. So, if somebody wants to comment from this side. It, yeah, one thing it, with the lime green, uh, yellow area down there, lemon yellow, I guess. <laughs> lemon is good. That's yeah. Good uh, with with that, one thing I don't know, and in, in, in looking at it, I don't know what's on the other side of the border there, and in the, in the neighbors that area it doesn't look like there's much there mm -hmm. and, and i don't know if that is a i mean that we can do whatever we want on our side of the the city line but if that is a natural corridor for wildlife if that is you know i don't know what's there and I, i'm trying to remember in my head and it's not coming to me so mm -hmm. it's hard to say you know if there's how much does development there encroach upon wildlife and other things like that. I can't say that just by looking at this without knowing what's next door. Yep. Yeah. Mr. Barry. So, so, so I was one of the guys that spoke to the uh, pulling back of the lemon section. Um, and I think, at, I think at our core, I think we have a uh, misalignment on what medium density is, right? So for me, I consider single family housing low density. I don't know if you guys agree. Um, when I think of medium density, I think of, say, mixed use. You know, like, um, let's say a business downstairs, residential upstairs. And, you know, that could be a two-story, three-story, four-story. High density to me would be a large residential apartment building. You know, our, our Terra Meadows, for example, would be considered um, high density. Um, to me, in that, that uh, high street corridor, at least up to roughly, I'd say, maybe around Walmart, I would say is probably low density. At least that's my definition. Um, so I agree with where the purple sections are, at least on Main Street. I think that's, that's perfectly tailored for that area. Um, but we may have to debate what, what we want to be when we grow up. That, that whole lemon section, do, do you guys want Terra Meadows back there? Do you want a whole street of Terra Meadows? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I don't know. I, oh. I'd also like to echo that comment. I think it would be helpful to have a quick discussion on what these definitions might be, um, because I do think different people have different ideas in their heads of what these definitions are, and that could have led to some of the confusion of what's going on the map. Yeah, and, and okay, the, okay, that's, that is Terra Meadows. So the other side is Rollinsford, which has resisted every project that has been developed or have been proposed in that area by this by the same folks that developed that, and that is a high traffic area for wildlife and that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, there was a proposal there that would be on the other side of the of the property, but we'd get all the all the traffic, we'd get all the the police calls, and we'd get mm -hmm. all that other kind of stuff over there. So I, I don't, I'm not sure that I would want to expand that area a whole lot anymore for 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 housing. But um, the the other on the, on the idea of density, what Kenny was describing at the uh, up on Willand Pond, where they really are cramming in those housing, it's not high density, but it's certainly there's, the land is disappearing. The yard, you know, green space is disappearing. They're packing them in so much that I would at least call it, I would call it at least mid density kind of a situation. So. Almost like a, it's almost like it's a micro pocket, right? It's like a, it's like a high density micro pocket mm -hmm. surrounded by low density, which, mm -hmm. which is exactly what it is, mm -hmm. by the way, right? Mm -hmm. There, there, there aren't any apartment buildings or condos immediately around that vicinity. Wow. Well, uh, okay, across the street, quarter mile down, yeah, okay. <laughs> Bet. Yeah. Bet. I, I think for me, it's kind of an odd way to define it, but I define medium versus high versus low density. Low density, you need one key to get into your house and you don't share a wall with anybody. Medium density, you need one key to get into your house and you do share a wall with somebody. High density, you need at least two keys to get into your home. Um, so when we're talking about mid-density, I'm thinking of things like townhouses, triple-deckers, um, things along those lines. And if we're looking at that section of High Street, I wouldn't have a problem with more of that kind of development going in there. It's a street that, as busy as it is, does accommodate high traffic, <coughs> got some developable land or redevelopable land in there. I wouldn't necessarily want another tar meadows getting dropped in there because that's a lot that I would rather see in a more dense core sort of situation. But if you look at it that way, I think that's entirely appropriate for mid. I guess one thing to add to that too is I think about infill as well in the discussion about mid densities. You know, it could still be a townhouse, but also infill the current layout there as well yeah so i think i guess we're now now we understand each other so as long as we have a, a good understanding of what the definitions are that we're playing with mm -hmm. um it's all subjective right uh, and we're all going to have a different answer but until we understand what lemon is what lemon is lemon is purple is purple is whatever that orange color is whatever that is mm -hmm. Because I want to understand, when I see high density, I'm thinking sky rises. I'm thinking high density, multiple units. Um, I'm thinking Elm Street. Yep. That, that's literally what I see. And I say, it, I could see 10, 10, 10 Elm Streets going into that, that section. Mm -hmm. um, so what if we updated this map based on the comments we heard tonight, um, proposed definitions for these various areas, send it back to you guys and get Another round of comments. Love it. Love it. I'm yeah. Sure. Um, one more question really quick I just want to bring up. In both groups, nothing really happened in this side of town. Are we really happy with this side of town, or did we not have enough time to get there in this exercise? Um, we, we were starting to sniff in that direction. You can see uh, we have a conservation area. I mean, it's all undeveloped. Mm -hmm. It's wide open out there. Um, I guess the question is, what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> uh, for me, I love green space. I love trees. That, I think that's what makes us special, mm -hmm. as opposed to Dover and Portsmouth. Portsmouth doesn't have any green space anymore, not much. Mm -hmm. um, so if we can still hit that 750 units by 2040 and still keep what makes us us, let's preserve it. Yeah. I think we're pretty much bound to hit that 740 units by 2040 if we're covering a third of that in two projects downtown. And, and the, the, other, the other thing with that is that um, it just went. <laughs> it came and it went. It Sorry about sometimes. that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, well, okay. I think my point was going to be people who, have, who do have property out there bought their property with that in mind. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and granted, 
you know, that's not always a guaranteed lifetime, you know, situation. But sometimes you have to be respectful of people as, as well as wildlife, too, and just say, you know, let's keep it that way. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the key thing to it also is if trails are out there and there's public access to some of that land, that makes it good for everybody. Mm -hmm. So what I'm hearing is there's not much development, there's a lot of trees, there's a lot of nature, we want to keep it. Yeah. That's the first two comments I've heard. Is that a general agreement? I would agree. I think it's some really nice type <coughs> farmland type open space area that should be preserved or, you know, minimized redevelopment of. Is this, would you guys prefer to see this section of the map empty as is, or would you like to see something here identifying that we don't want significant development in that portion of town? City, sorry. Minimal. I like that word. You know, if, if we were to put things out there, I'd like to see things like parks. You know, uh, you know, one thing that uh, somebody did down the street was put a disc golf course in. You know, if you if anybody's ever played disc golf, you're it's it's like a park. You know, you're out in nature, you're walking, you're hiking. It's it's really a wonderful sport. Mm -hmm. um, that's the sort of stuff I would like to see out there and, and trails to get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So up here, parks, trails, recreation, minimal development. That's what I'm hearing? Yeah. And lots of nods, I'm seeing agreements. Let me just say, um, those that that area of town is has a golf course. Okay. Um, that is where the golf course is, correct? And so there's very large parcels there that are owned and taken up. Yep. Um, and around Woolland Pond, uh, excuse me, Lily Pond, um, you have lots that are that are there, but there's a lot of wetlands there. So, um, not that not that uh, that's going to stop us from deeming it whatever it's going to be. That's just something that we need to keep in consideration. Yep. And I guess one other thing that I'm thinking about is when we're putting down these zones, it would be important that we think about where we're going. What, where do we want to be in 15 years? Just because we can drop a high density or a medium density doesn't make sense with our long-term vision. Um, you know, I always think about what, what's, for example, like we have the dome going in. What, what's going to happen around the dome? Well, what do we want? What do we want to happen in that area of Willem Pond Drive? Um, I don't know. I mean, that's something we need to think about. We should probably factor that into how we do it. Maybe that whole area should be purple. Maybe, maybe, maybe it should be orange. I really don't know. Um, I look at downtown. You know, what, what are we going to do with the downtown corridor? I, I really am I'm not sure. Uh, but I, I know down in my heart that the purple section down Main Street being mixed use, I think that that's true to where we're going. And maybe even w you guys should talk with Rollinsford and find out what, they're, what they want to do. Because maybe they can pick up where we leave off. Or maybe they can meet us in the middle. Mm-hmm. Any other comments? I've got to say, I commend you guys for um, going through the exercise. I've worked with many, or may, maybe not many, but several towns that, when it gets to the future land use, they're like, "Nope, we don't want to. We don't want to be the ones to say development should go here or development should go here." But honestly, this is the heart of planning. Um, you know, without having some kind of vision and s some kind of an idea you know you're you're missing a big part of what planning is about so you guys did this very easily so, so. yeah thank you thank you um you have lisa and mike's email address on the back of one of those forms um we forgot to put mine on there it's j r a n d at strafford um, but if you have any questions about this map, you can email me, you can email Lisa, you can email Mike, um, or if you can't find my email somewhere, I'm sure Michelle would forward an email to me if you have any comments. Um, so feel free to reach out. We will update these maps um, and provide an updated version to you guys. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.
Director Mears, anything to add before we move on to the next item? Nothing, just uh, thanks to the regional planning folks, Lisa and Jackson. Uh, I'm excited to get the final report. We have had 160 people take the natural resources and uh, land use survey, so those of you that are listening that haven't taken it, please do. Uh, we're hoping to get over 300. That's how many we got for the housing survey. <laughs> Next item D, any new business that may, may come before the board? Director Mears. None this evening. Workshop business. Yes, uh, thank you. I did include some information regarding um, the proposed edits by the Mayor's Housing Task Force for uh, accessory dwelling units. This would be to allow for detached accessory dwelling units. Uh, the Mayor and the Housing Task Force asked for a few comments, so I provided some comments um, for you guys. Um, the key changes are they're gonna, they're proposing to allow for detached. Um, and the other key change that the Mayor's Housing Task Force is proposing is um, to delete the architectural standards. Uh, and I think that's, that's about it. So I had some comments. Um, the first would be in the definition section, um, we'd need to update the uh, definition of dwelling unit to include detached in that. Uh, section 25 for definitions, uh, dwelling unit accessory. Uh, the other comment I had for the planning board to try and get some feedback on is um, regarding exterior alterations, um, the changes to the architecture. I think that is something that the planning board might uh, have comments on. Uh, as a staff person, I definitely have comments on. I think there should be some kind of uh, architectural regulations for detached accessory dwelling units. Um, new market, I did uh, provide new markets uh, as an example. It's a little bit longer. They have a, two different sections for uh, one for attached and one for detached. Uh, uh, recommendation could be to leave what we have in there. Uh, I did include some information regarding dimensional standards uh, and living area uh, should, shall not exceed 800 square feet. And then I included some uh, information regarding setbacks, just making sure that the uh, detached dwelling unit meets current setbacks for the zone. Um, and then another addition was an absence of a, an existing state approved septic plan on file with the city. Uh, they would have to provide some inf information that uh, the septic system that they have can meet uh, the increased load for the accessory dwelling unit. And then uh, not to allow manufactured housing or accessory dwelling units on manufactured housing or townhomes. Uh, I don't think I included that in there, but I think that should be also spelled out. So if, you, if the planning board wants to provide uh, some comments to give back to the housing task force, that would be much appreciated. Uh, this is a, kind of a low-hanging fruit that came out of the regulatory audit from Stratford Regional Planning Commission. So this is the first task that they've been working on. So I don't know if uh, planning board members have any feedback regarding it. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, what are they talking about a detached unit? So a detached unit could be an accessory dwelling unit uh, in a garage or above a garage. Currently, we do not allow that in our regulations. It's not just building a second house on the lot? You you could uh, build a 800 square foot house as well. Separate from the, okay. Yeah. I guess that might have, uh, I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. Uh, I worked in Durham a long time and uh, of course, they're kind of experts at that because there's so many college students and you couldn't tell in these single family residences that they had apartments, but they were able to put them in the basement or over a garage. And I, I, I'm all with having to detach garage with an apartment above it. I don't know if just a, uh, being able to build a second house basically on the property. Uh, yeah, that's I don't know if that would uh, do something with the surrounding property values. Like I said, they, they seem to, to have it down pat uh, to make uh, a single family uh, zoned area look single family, but almost every other house had a, a student apartment in it. So I don't know if we can do it that way, where 
uh, this way it protects the single family owners that don't want to do ADUs and uh, protects their housing values. That's just my co one person's comment. Yeah, I would <laughs> question the removal of the architectural standard in there. Um, under a strict interpretation of this, you could basically drop anything onto a lot and have it be completely legal as long as you can hook it up to utilities and have it pass building code. Um, that really worries me because if we want to have a community that looks like a community when we grow up, we need to enforce some degree of appearance standard. Otherwise, as long as it's under 800 square feet, drop a trailer in your backyard and it's legal. Yeah, I, my big question, and, and I'll uh, try to address it a little bit, but my big question as I was reading through this is, when does a single family home transition to a duplex based on appearance, outside appearance? I mean, we're, we're talking about allowing stairways, not on front, but outside. Um, I think we see a lot of, uh, not a lot, but some units here in Summersworth where someone's pushed through to the attic and put, put in a, a bedroom or an office space or whatever, but they have to have a fire regress and they put out a little balcony, which I've never understood that because I think that's a trap, but anyway. But I don't agree with a set of stairs going up because that makes it look like a duplex. It makes it look like there's an apartment on the second floor. And, and I'm not sure, and at least in my mind, uh, if adding a second satellite dish, does that make it look like a, a duplex? Maybe it does to some people. Um, if you can put in a separate tiny house and not have something over a garage, that makes no sense to me at all. So <laughs> I'd rather see something over the garage than a, than a separate tiny house type thing. Um, because at least the, over the garage blends in with the current environment that's there. Um, so that, that's a big question to me is when does a single family begin to start? It, and another one was, you know, you, you can't have a separate entrance on the front. Well, if you just build out a vestibule and still keep your setbacks and put in two doors and essentially divide it, is that? You're only seeing one door, but it's, is that a duplex? I don't know. And so there's a lot of things I question about it. Mr. Vincent, Mr. Barry, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, yeah, these are some of the challenges that come about uh, for making more housing um, to making, like I said, more housing. So these are some of the challenges that we'll, we're being challenged with. Um, and I think that... Uh, slowing the train down so to speak and making the right decisions will be will be the right way to go because it'll be a less impact on the road without big mistakes mr barry couldn't agree with that more uh, <coughs> right right on counselor um yeah i'm also really opposed to the tiny house idea you know um when you build a house, you have to follow rules, right? You have setbacks, you have um, all the spacing and whatnot. You know, do, do these secondary houses have to follow those rules? I would expect they better. Um, and if we if we were to enforce rules, how many parcels are actually capable of being able to receive something of that nature? Probably not that many. But I still wouldn't like to see two houses on the same parcel. I mean, we have that. Why why are we here? We we do subdivisions all the time. I mean, that's literally what you're doing. So, why? What's the point? Outside, Mr. Horton. I'll just add that, uh, I mean, I, I would agree with a lot of the conversation that I would be in favor of, like, over the garage type ADU, but not a standalone separate uh, residence. So, so Aben, do you have anything? Yeah. You I agree with uh, a lot of it, but the other thing is following the, uh, the codes, in, in, uh, especially the fire safety codes and the spacing within that dwelling for the fire, fire person to go in there to save somebody and or if somebody's uh, hurt or disabled, it, uh, you know, how are they going to get around? But the, the unit would have to 
be big enough or small enough or big enough for them to move around. Yeah, I got one question for Director Mears. Uh, I don't know if we've covered this in all the housing uh, possibilities. Uh, tiny houses, the best way to utilize those if we ever were to, uh, do you utilize those as like with mobile home parks have an area zone to build just tiny houses, like a community, or uh, do you build tiny houses infill? Uh, something maybe we can workshop or or the housing committee? Yeah, one of the recommend recommendations that came out of uh, the regulatory audit was to allow for cottage courts, which um, they do in Dover is, um, it's smaller houses, smaller houses the closer courts together. Like a zone just, okay, so. Yeah, in certain zones. Okay. Um, I, I don't, I've yet to see how they work once they're built and if there's code enforcement issues. Yeah, I don't want to get, get away from what we're discussing tonight. But yeah. And kind of came up with the ADU <laughs> discussion. Any other discussion? I would be happy to uh, rework this and maybe make a recommendation for some architectural standards and then bring it back to the board. Sounds good. Any other workshop business? None this evening. Communications and miscellaneous. I have one. I attended a council meeting uh, last week, and the city council seems to want to uh, uh, have more communications as far as uh, letting the public know of uh, positions on uh, city boards. So just uh, in, in the spirit of that, I want to announce that we, according to the uh, Notice downstairs, there are one permanent position on the planning board, a regular position, and three alternate positions currently advertised. So anybody that is interested would contact, would it be the mayor or the city clerk? The city clerk, and you fill out a statement of interest, it's called. Okay, so we're trying to get that information out uh, as much as possible. Any other communications and miscellaneous? I have one thing, Mr. Chairman. Director Mears. Uh, so as some of you may know, Paul, R Paul Robitis will be done at the end of September. Uh, he's been great to work with, and he currently serves on the Site Review Technical Committee uh, group. So we are going to need a new member uh, to come to the group in October. And we meet on the first and third Wednesday of the month at 10 o'clock in the morning, so that first and second. Uh, Wednesday at 10 a.m. So I know that might be challenging for uh, some members, but if anybody's interested, let me know. Is there a uh, drop dead date for that, or if we could, meeting, yeah, or? if we could have somebody identified by the next meeting, that would be good. All right. Any other comments, Mr. Berry? Yeah, a couple of quick comments. First off, um, you know, I want to thank Mr. Robitis for all his time that he's done on this board. I've, I've learned a lot from him in the time that I've been on this board. It's going to be, uh, uh, that's, a, that's a big pair of shoes to fill. So thank you, Paul. Um, yep. Also, just to speak to Don't Trash Summersworth, we had our, our uh, session here last weekend, formed up at the uh, St. Martin's Church. Uh, we collected 10 bags and had seven attendees. Uh, we look forward to doing another session down in the um, down in the high street corridor, down towards the Lions Club. But um, another another ten bags. Also, uh, for those of you who aren't aware, um, the dome has gone up, right? So if you guys haven't been down on Will and Pond, it is fantastic. Go check it out. So um, I think we're we're finally hitting a major hinge, a turning point for the city, and that's that's the first big statement. So I, I look forward to checking out when it's done. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Looking for a motion to adjourn. Yeah. Motion made by Mr. Horton, seconded by Mr. Barry. All those in favor, raise your right hand. <coughs> Opposed? Thank you very much.